Hi, I'm Jolie from Jolie of Craft, and today I want to talk about using your crochet hook to cast on and bind off your knitting. This was an anonymous request that was made over at my Tumblr. Um, Anon is a crocheter that is learning how to knit and wanted to know if it was possible to both cast on and bind off with their crochet hook and then knit in between while having it look nice and even. And you know what? Yes, you can. It is possible. And not only that, it's actually one of my favorite ways to cast on and bind off. Look at this. So these are the cast on, and there's the bind off. It's got those beautiful little V's, and they match. So yes, it is possible, and today I'm going to show you how. Okay, so to start, we're going to make a slip knot. Let me put this to the side, and how I make a slip knot doesn't really matter if you have the yarn or the tail on one side, right? So it, it really doesn't matter. And so for this video, I have the tail on this side and the yarn on that side. All that matters is that you turn the very top loop towards the yarn that we're working with. So since it's over here, I'm going to turn it that way. So pick up that top loop and turn it, and I turn it that way towards this right here. Okay? Now I'm going to, and see, it looks like an awareness ribbon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this top loop and we're going to fold it down over that cross that we've made. And it should look, oh hey, it looks like a little pretzel. I'm going to take our hook, ah, and we're going to slip it under this strand of yarn, that's the working yarn, right, from this side of the pretzel, under, but then over that outside loop, okay? I hold. I like to hold down both ends, and when you pull, well, now we've got a slip knot. Yay! Not only do we have a slip knot, we actually have our very first stitch, believe it or not. Now, before I continue, I do want to say that I use, for this video, Right? I, I normally use Clover soft touch hooks, but for this video I'm using a Boy Aluminum set, and the reason being is once we're done, when we get to a certain part you'll see, we'll be slipping those stitches off the back end of the hook and onto a knitting needle. So if you had a crochet hook that has a thick, thick uh, handle, not only could you not slide the stitches over, um, those hooks tend to have a smaller neck to work with, so you could only put a small amount of stitches on the hook. But we want to be able to do a project where you can do a lot. So that's why I'm using this. However, for the sake of the video, I'm only going to show you how to do it with eight stitches, right? And that's the thing, too. Okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to chain eight stitches. The same number of stitches that you need for the project is the number of stitches you're going to chain. So if I need eight, I'm going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now remember, this is the first stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip one and we're going to go into the second chain. But instead of going into the chain, we want to go, if we turn our work around, you're going to see all those chains have bumps, right? Bump, 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 all the way across. Or some people, I think you guys call them uh, hyphens? Yeah, I think some call them hyphens. But those are what we want to go into, because by going into that one, then the bottom of our work will be that, and that's what we want. So, we're going to skip one, <laughs> skip one, and we're going to go into the second back bump. We'll pull it nice and tight, because we want that first stitch to be tight, or tight enough. And I'm going to go into that, let me put it in and then show you, here's the hyphen. So what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over and pull through. And we've got a loop. Okay, I know as a crochet you're going to want to yarn over and single crochet that, but don't, okay? You're going to go into the next bump, right there. We're going to go in, yarn over, pull through. And because, even though we've chained eight, because we're using the first loop as a stitch and we skip the first chain, you should have, at the end, we should have eight stitches on our hook. So, I'm going to just keep going over, going into the back bumps, if I can get chained a little tightly there. There you go. Yarn over, pull through. So, what we're doing here is we're actually just we're recreating the cast on, as if we're casting on with the regular knitting needles. But we're doing it with a hook. And finally, number eight. So, let me count for you. 
two, four, six, eight, sure enough. All right, so look at that. And you could see what our bottom will look like. All those pretty Vs. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take those stitches. Now, mind you, let's say if you were to chain, I don't know, 40 stitches across, right? And the hook only holds a certain amount. So pretend we have like about 15 on here, but we have all these chains coming off, right? So what we would do is we would actually slide that onto the needle, right? And then we're going to keep chaining. Slide that onto the needle. So you can do it in sections. It is possible. All right, so we're going to take it to the end. And we're just going to, I'll show you here. You could do it one at a time. You could do it two at a time if you're comfortable enough. You could do it four at a time if you're crazy enough. I'm not. <laughs> I'll do two at a time. One and one. Okay, so those stitches are on. We are good. So now all we're going to do is say, hey, turn our work around. And I'm going to purl. I'm going to work that stocking stitch just like I did the swatch, right? Drop that tail. So I'm going to pearl across. Now one thing to notice, you're going to look at your work and be like, hey, those stitches are twisted, so you're going to want to fix it. With the way that we yarned over that crochet hook, you actually don't want to do that. You want that first row to be nice and tight. So forget about the rules of knitting that tell you, oh, you got to turn this and fix it, because that first row is going to be a little too loose for your liking. So just go into that regular back stitch or the untwisted, no, twisted, sorry, and just purl across. Go back in there. There we go. And by doing so, that's going to be nice and tight. And that last stitch is your very first stitch that we made, the loop from the slip stitch. The cool thing is you don't even feel... No, oh, sorry, it was over here. Ah, never mind. Um, there you go. And that's it. Now I'm going to knit across and then purl back so we have some yarn room, right? And then I'll show you guys how to bind off. I'm actually going to have a tutorial for you guys soon on how to knit socks. And I'm going to be doing different ones. I'm not just going to be like, oh, this is how I knit socks. I have different ways to up, cuff down. And one of my, like I said before, one of my favorite ways of doing the toes of the socks is actually using this method. Um, I learned it a long time ago when I first started knitting. I think Eliza on YouTube does it as well. If I find her video, I'll post it in the description below because I like the way that she knits. Her descriptions are a little fast sometimes. I have to stop and go back. But I think she does the same method. But how, it, how you take the the crochet hook and then you, like I said, you just you chain and you pick up those stitches and you kind of knit the way I'm doing now. And then you pick up the stitches on the beginning chain that we did. And since the V's are so prominent, you could see actually the pickup. And it's it's practically invisible by the time you finish the increase of the toe. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to do that. Let me know in the, in the comment section below if you guys are interested in me doing a tutorial like that, using that for the toe and different kinds of toes rather than just one sock video. Anyways, so we finished our knitting. Let's say I want to cast off here. A little tiny piece, but enough, right? Oh, before we continue, before I forget, another good th reason to use this, this cast on with this bind off, if you're doing a piece that you want both ends to be even, a lot of um, scarves, I like doing them this way, because then pretend I made a long scarf, right? both ends will be even. You don't have that one loop cast on that you get even with a long toe cast on. And I favor long toe cast ons like that's that's my go-to. But if I want both ends to be even, I'll use this. I love this cast on. I love this bind off. Anyways, um, okay, so the bind off, we're basically going to be m mimicking the way that you bind off with a knitting needle but we're doing it with the hook, okay? 
And what we're basically going to be doing is we're going to be slip stitching stitches off. We're going to be using the slip stitch method. So we're going to go into that first stitch and we're going to go in. Now just the way that the loop is, the loops are on the, on the needle, you're going to want to, or naturally the hook is going to want to go into the stitch below. You got to pay attention to that. Don't do that. Make sure it goes into the stitch as if you're knitting, right? And I'm going to take the yarn and I'm going to yarn over like you do crochet and take it off. I'm going to do the same thing with the other stitch. So I'm going to go in as if to knit, making sure I go into the loop, not into the one below. I'm going to yarn over, pull through and take it off, and then I'm going to take that loop and I'm going to slip stitch it right off. See what I did? I just bound off the first stitch. So now we're going to go into the stitch, right, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, take it off the needle, and then slip stitch off. And that's it. That's all we're going to do. We're going to do that until the very end until we have one stitch left. So into the stitch. And I do a little bit of wiggle just to make sure it goes in there and not into the one below, right? Yarn over, pull through and off, and slip stitch. And we are going to do that all the way until we get to the very end. We got three more. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, off. Hey, we're going to slip stitch. Like I said, I just love this method. And I got so happy that I got this in on because I was actually contemplating, hmm, what can my next episode be? Bam, inbox. So I just, I loved it. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and off. Very last one. So I'm just going to slip stitch right off. And that's it. I mean, you could pull up a loop, put the hook to the side, and cut it. I'm not going to cut it. But so you guys can see, look at that. Sure enough. Here's our cast on. Here's our bind off. And we are done. Well, Anon, if you're watching this, I hope you like the video. Um, I hope everybody else liked the video. Hope it helped out a lot of crocheters that wanted to know if it was possible. It might actually help you guys knit. Um, maybe feel a little bit more comfortable in your knitting. Um, either way, I, again, I just I hope you guys liked it. If you do, please like this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time... Until next Wednesday, <laughs> happy crafting!